what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel uh, for all the new subscribers my name is Norman I'm also known as King Julian in case we all are wondering King Julian is my road name with my motorcycle club and it was kind of a weird way how that came about which we'll get into that sometime in a later video uh, as y'all know in the previous video I've been working on a car uh, that was very old school build and you know, sometimes to put my mind at ease over what's happened, working seems to help. As y'all can tell, today I'm a little bit more energetic. Um, it's still on my mind. Dear friend, she's gone. And, um, but I got a car to complete that has rightfully been named uh, Spirit of Teresa. So, I want to get this car done so I can be on the rails. So, here's where we're at now. Um, the roof's been painted. The blue's been laid down. I will still have to do the light blue post pinstriping. Um, and the clear coat. I've got a few things I need to touch up right here and on this side. And I'm going to have to correct all that by hand uh, or strop it off later and then reshoot that area. Um, and then I got to paint the handrails in the orange stripe and get the FM logo on each side of the, the car. With that came another thought. This is a 1940s build. Okay, I'm not saying that this is a 40s kit because it was not by any means. If anybody's watched the channel, you know, I love building stuff from scratch. As model railroaders, I think in the industry we kind of forget things. Now, this model was completely built using wood, cardboard, glue, and fiberglass or fiberglass resin. And my other car that we've been working on, <coughs> let me grab it. This one, the German railgun. This was built during, this was goes back to a time and an era when Lionel wasn't producing trains. And people were building stuff out of cardboard, glue, and resin, or, or epoxy, whatever it was they had back then. Now, I'm not the first model builder as far as going from scratch build. The best person I ever knew was Dad and his business partner, John Allen, who were owners of Shortline Card Foundry, which I grew, had the privilege of growing up in and helped produce these G-scale museum quality trains. But it got me to really thinking. As model railroaders, and as much as we scrutinize models, Lionel, MTH, uh, Atlas, you name it, okay, we, we scrutinize them in every way. How come we forget what the people did during the 40s? During a time when nobody knew what the outcome of World War II was going to be. You don't see that a lot. Um, why, why don't we get back to doing other things? You know, yes, I'm not done with this because I need to get it on a uh, saw and I got to align the trucks before I make my final cuts on here and build the barrel. Um, and these were two 1940 experiments, so this has actually turned out very well, uh, just like the Spirit of Teresa. It has turned out better than I ever expected. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... When it's all said and done, and clear-coated, you won't even be able to tell there was even cardboard there. So, uh, I guess what my point is, is, you know, I guess, I, I'm not most people. I like to build orders something and go, cool, it's me, it's done, put it on the rails, let's run. 
But also at the same time, when you're building something from scratch, excluding the kinky sheriff, articulate. When you're building something, um, you spend about the same amount of time as you're waiting on it. So that's kind of brought me back to, you know, as model railroaders, how come we're not still building a lot of the stuff? I get it that the generations are getting older. Um, and we live in a very fast-paced world now. Um, but there's still got to be some time where you can step back, you know, put a piece of you into it. Uh, much like a video I watched today from uh, Dave Griffin of him wiring his 2243 ABA locomotive. You know, it was what got him back in the O-scale. And I was very impressed. And it's not so much because it was his locomotive or what he was doing, but because he took the initiative to do something people were doing years ago. And um, I was like, you know what, Dave, that's pretty cool, dude. That is really cool. Um, you know, why are we doing that anymore? The hobby's not dead. I think people just don't have the time. Uh, or they just, you know, they just want to go ahead and go buy it, you know, and get it on the rails. But ultimately, there has to come a time and a point when you really want to do something. And you want to build something. Um, you know, where you just want to just relax and have you. You know, um, this, that's how, how both these projects started. <laughs> it was a 1940s experiment to see if it worked. My seven-year-old son rekindled that. My 12-year-old son helped rekindle it by doing what he was doing with his open frame log cart. And it helps bring a person down. I think it's a relaxation phase. And it's a lot of relaxation. You know, a lot of people say, well, it's stressful because you're doing this and this and this and this. Hey, if it doesn't turn out perfect, who cares? It's yours. You know, you can do what you want with it. It's your hobby, your car, your locomotive, whatever it is that you're building. Uh, or whatever it is that you're modeling. That might be um, what, what you're going after. So... My point being is take the time, build it. No matter if you got a small layout, a big layout, you're just starting, but you want something unique, build it. Make it part of you. Don't let others with the industry always take away from what's you. If you buy a car and you look at it and go, I don't like the color. Take your time, repaint it. Have some good time. You buy a parts lot, and you're like, I got all these extra parts. What am I supposed to do with them? Here's another example. Hey, y'all have all seen this one up here on my channel. The modern day take on the Hutch. It is a big caboose boxcar. It was used for short line and brake line services. So, why not take an old example, bring it to a modern, take some time out for yourself. This is what I do driving a truck. I, this is how I relax. Um, and again, I, I mean, I truly enjoy this car. Uh, I hate that. Sorry, I got pepper on those earlier. Um, and it helps me relax out here on the road. And it also keeps my mind sharp. It keeps me from becoming complacent. But at the same time, I'm producing something that's very unique. Uh, something that most people will not see on their layout. Dave has a uh, caboose on his layout that is very unique. And he says it's the most prototypical. Well, guess what, Dave? It almost is. 
It's very close to being prototypical to the United States Navy caboose. Only difference is the cupola, it needed another segment of just a cupola area like this, this complete section, added in the center of that car and painted gray. Yes, it is a monstrous caboose, but you know what? You are almost 100% that's almost prototypical without even knowing it. So Dave, there you go to answer your question on that. And this car was built from two parts lots. Did it cost me a lot? No, not really. I think the caboose came in one, which when you broke it down, it was like three bucks. This one came in a parts lot of four. I think I broke that one down to like five bucks. And materials, I already had that. I built some subframe for it. The trucks were from two different kits that came out of the parts lots. Really? In all reality, how much did it cost me? Um, if you count just from parts lots that I was built from, zero. But if you count the lettering and the striping, Eight dollars. Not much, right? Another car that came from a parts lot. This one, which I'm still not done with. The refrigerator. I bought it. It's a K line. Um, of course, as I said, the trucks are just there. They're not prototypical. They're not actually what's going on here. Um, It needed help. So I've got other trucks that go on it. I painted it to match the excursion train, which I still got to do the striping. Made my own ladders, made my own step rails. Um, little stuff. And yes, it was an already made model, granted. But let's look at the other side of this. It was kit bashed. And kit bashed it was. And not heavily kit bashed, not as much as the modern day hutch, but it was a kit bash. Um, and it's what I was going to do to add in part of the 22 car setup. Of course, I will be changing out the trucks. Um, So, here you go. Now, these, like I said, these are not the correct trucks. These are not the trucks going to be on this. Uh, okay, so you have to do a few touch-ups. So what? Have some fun. Why are we doing this? Main reason? Life is moving faster than we want it to. And it's an art that's getting lost. And if it's some way that I can help bring that lost art back, yeah, I'm going to help bring it back if I can. But you know what? Ultimately, it comes down to the person, depending on what you want to do. So, that's what we've done on this channel so far, including the articulate that we're working on. Uh, kind of ran out of wood on that one, so i got to bring some more wood. A thin wood. Oops. Miscalculated. But why? Why not take some downtime for yourself? Build what you want. If somebody don't have it, build it. Get bash it. Have some fun. And ultimately, sometimes it can cost you zero. Much like this car and the Royal Cannon car. Both of them, zero. Just to build the bodies. Now, did I order trucks? Yeah, I told y'all I did. I spent $16 on trucks and knuckles, which I got upset at the MTH Streamline. 
for this car. I've got local couplers coming in for the articulate. And this. $16. Two cars. That's a very cheap price. And when it's all said and done, most people will never know these were built out of cardboard and resin. What can I say? But, as always, please hit like and subscribe. Drop some comments. Let's keep on having a good time here. And let's keep on rocking. Something was on my mind tonight, and I wanted to bring it out. As always, keep the shiny sun rubber down. I will see y'all on the next video. Maybe tomorrow. Maybe the next day. I've got to let the paint cure on this for about 24 to 48 hours before I can do the next phase. And we'll go from there. As always, again, please keep the shiny side up. I want to see each and one of y'all back. See y'all on the next one. Have a good night.